Changing minds one thought at a time. Greetings and welcome to the Motivate Social Podcast, where we bring you people that are changing the world via social media. I am Dr. Akina Stench, and of course, I have my lovely co-host with me at all times, Ms. Vanessa Canterbury. How are you doing today, Vanessa? I am great. How are you? I am awesome because we have a guest here that is going to blow everybody's socks off. She is powerful, she's dynamic, and she is the wealth builder. So I'm not going to make y'all wait any longer. I can't wait to introduce Danielle Winningham. How are you doing, Danielle? I am outstanding. Thank you so much for asking, sis. Yes, ma'am. I mean, it's always an honor to have you on the line because I know that you're going to bring the power, the heat, and you're going to give them what they need and not just what they want. So that's right up our alley. Well, I hope I stand so up without, for all that talk, or the Dr. <laughs> oh, I know you will. I know you will. But you know what? I'm going. I'm not going to let them wait too long, right? So I'm going to ask you the first question that they've been waiting on. What do you do to change the world via social media? You know, uh, to me, changing the world, and especially being able having the blessing of being able to touch so many people via social media, uh, my calling is truly not just women but helping women get beyond the poverty line, beyond middle class, and helping women really understand their value and their worth, not just in a monetary sense, but that's important too, but even as it relates to uh, how they handle themselves and their dreams and their purpose and their passion and being able to cash in on doing what they love to do which ultimately, to me, helps them lead a better life overall because we don't have to go to jobs we hate. We don't have to, you know, uh, keep putting on ski masks and robbing Peter to pay Paul. There are things we can do that within, our, uh, within the confines of our own talent that will not only pay us, but pay us well. So that, that's the message that I bring to women every day on social media is stop working for free, Stop working for cheap. Char- know your worth, charge your worth, and change your life. Wow. Danielle, that is absolutely amazing um, because the way social media is going, everything is going online, everything. And so if you're on social media, that's the way to go, and you could be able to connect with people that you would never expect to connect with that could be in your circle that could be able to help you get to that next level. And that's great. That is really, really great because I understand um, this new technology world, as I'm always saying, um, because I didn't understand anything about how to be able to build a successful business online after I was laid off. I had no clue. So I get exactly where you're coming from. So, yes, what you do is absolutely needed, and I thank you so much. My question to you is why did you decide to take this route, um, helping people online? Was there an incident that took place where you was no longer able to work in corporate America or was you laid off, whatever the case may be? Because what, you, what you're doing right now, so many people need to hear. So many people need to hear this. So what happened that allowed you to go this route? So I don't, I don't know if it was a happen other than I was in the right place at the right time. And understanding mm. my background, I've always had a job, right? Mm. I, I don't know anything but working for somebody else. And mm. so when it came to that, that opportunity, when I wrote my first book, I was still in corporate America. That was in 2011. Uh, at the time, I, I was an assistant vice president. I later on uh, uh, was promoted to vice president, but I didn't have anybody around me other than my immediate circle who would buy my book. And with that being said, how else was I going to get people to buy my book other than building relationships on social media, which at the time was Facebook. Mm -hmm. That's really the only social media I had. 
That's the only social media I knew. And so I went out onto Facebook and started connecting with other authors. And in the process of connecting with other authors, I saw the Rashonda Tate Billingsleys and the, all the other authors who may be urban lit authors or, or uh, you know, fiction authors, but they were ripping it up on social media. And I said, man, well, you know, if the Lord will do it for them, you know, just might be he'll do it for me. <laughs> and so that, that I just started, um, I started building my following on social media, and the rest is, you know, 70-plus thousand followers later, the rest is history. Wow. Yes, yes. That's so powerful. You know, and I love the way you said, you know, if you can do it for you, you know, you, sh- mm. you could do it for me. That is such a powerful and positive attitude to have because a lot of people are like, oh, it's just for them, it's just for them. No, it's for you too. It's for you too. You know, and the same thing with we have 24 hours in the day. You have the same 24 hours that I have. It's what we do with those things. Mm -hmm. So when you were deciding that you were going to be the wealth builder and you started connecting with people on the social media uh, fronts and platforms, what really was the turning point that let you know that this was the right way to go with uh, being the wealth builder? You know, because you could have gotten on social media and just said, I just want to sell my book. But what made you become the wealth builder? And and one of the reasons I call myself wealth speaker on all platforms, on social media, and I tell, I even tell my clients this, I don't know if, if I chose it or if it was chosen for me. When I first started, all I knew was I, I needed to help women, right? I wanted to help women. Watch this, watch this, this, this evolution. And I knew that having me just gotten a divorce after 16 years, having a great job in corporate America, but still struggling financially because I was now a single mother with three kids, I, I had to solve for myself the problem of how do I generate more revenue above and beyond this job I already have without going out and taking more time outside of my household to work a second job. And, and you know, the Lord told Moses, you know, I don't know if anybody read that book, but when, when, when Moses was in a pinch, the Lord told him, Moses, what's in your hand? And so what was in my hand was years and years of coaching and consulting experience, years and years of financial experience from being a vice president at J.P. Morgan Chase, years and years of executive coaching, sales coaching, years and years of how to go get money. That was what what was in my hand. And so I don't know if I chose it or if through uh, the process of these jobs and assignments that I've had over the years, if it was somehow chosen for me, if it was somehow predestined. And so I always tell people when you said earlier, you know, what, what, what's for me is for me, or, you know, it, it's more than enough for everybody. So that, that, the, the caveat to that is stay in the lane of what your expert is. Stay in the lane of, of your experience. Stay in the lane of what you were purposed to do. And the more you stay in that lane of where you built your excellence, the easier it is to translate that excellence into revenue. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Um, I I, I love the fact that you know it, um, it, it took what you were taught over those years and it incorporated into a business. I tell people all the time that it's so possible. Take the things that you've learned through life. Take the things that you learned in while you was working on that job, and take those the most important things that you've learned and incorporate some of those things into your business because it does work. And um, I and I'm a believer. I'm a true, true believer that God will make room for your gift. There's enough room for you. There's enough room for that next person. And so with you taking every single thing that you've learned along your journey and to be able to say, you know what, I know there's more out there. I'm going to speak it. I'm the wealth builder. Because, you know, when you're speaking it to your existence, I'm just saying, it's going to come out as long as you're willing to do the work. And so 
I'm loving what you're doing. I'm loving, loving, loving what you're doing. And um, one of my my questions will be, what's one of the things that um, when when somebody, whoever you reach, the first person that you reached after when you first started being um, transforming lives, because that's exactly what you're doing. You're transforming lives. And when you received your first testimonial from whoever that person was, what's the first thing that came to your mind? You know what? I'm I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if I even remember that 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 moment. And let me tell you why. As women, we've been changing lives for a long time, sis. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. Just because I was getting paid for it now, <laughs> just because I got a check for it, you understand what I'm saying? It, mm-hmm. How long? I mean, in corporate America, it was it was more than just about them reaching their sales numbers. It was about them having gas money to get to work. It was about mm-hmm. them having money to pay their daycare. It was about did they get their payroll check on time. It was about the people. And so even the thousands of people that I've worked with in my job at Corporate America will tell you, man, you know, I'll, I'll run into people in the grocery store that I was mm-hmm. 15 years ago. And they still tell the story about something I did for them that I probably forgot mm-hmm. but changed the trajectory of their life or changed how they thought about women or even changed how they thought about themselves. And so mm-hmm. I don't know if I could pinpoint that moment because I think as women we underestimate really how much we serve. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've been making snacks for the doggone booster club for my children uh, when they was in – Kindergarten to first grade, they in college now. That's lives. And so, you know, all of the toy drives I run and all of the, you know, collecting dresses for prom and suits for success, and I don't even know if you could even go back in any of our lives. I'm not even just talking about me. I don't even know back if we could go back in any of our lives. And, and it, Do we even stop to think about, you know, the many lives we're touching? Or do we just go and keep going? Mm-hmm. You know, that makes perfect sense because, you know, like you said, we tend to underestimate ourselves as women. And I know the mm-hmm. next question I'm going to ask you, you have encountered a lot. So what do you say to the woman who tells you, well, that's what I do anyway. Why do I need to get paid for that? Huh. But she gets an earful for me, number one. I help her understand that the numbers don't lie and that right now the, the primary gender group that's in poverty is women, and mm-hmm. when women are in poverty, that means children are impoverished. Uh, women lead the numbers as it relates to people in absolute poverty. That means living a certain percentage below the poverty line. Women, elderly women, lead the numbers as it relates to gender uh, and being impoverished uh, in our golden years. And so my answer to her is if you don't charge now, you're going to regret it later. And that if that person really, really wants your help, really, really wants needs your help, they will pay you. They don't mm-hmm. go to Walmart and get groceries for charity. They don't go to Nordstrom and get clothes for charity. There is nowhere else in the world that they can even venture to expect getting a product or a service for free except for with these women in business who don't know how to put a price tag on it and charge their worth and stick by it and stick by it and not fall victim to the woe is me, I need a discount syndrome that is is just permeating throughout the entire women community. We've got to understand that broke people break people. And until you can put your foot down and charge your worth, every it's this vicious cycle of you want a discount from me because she got a discount from you because she got a discount from her. And, and, and I want to just remind everybody that's listening, this ain't your money no way. This is money that's supposed to be set aside for your children's children. So you really don't have the right 
to be running through the world pimping yourself for free because by right you're supposed to be getting the money together for your children's children. So when your children go to college and have a million dollars of student loans because you don't charge your work, that's your fault. And when you're on government assistance because you won't charge your work, that's your fault. And when lights are getting cut off and phones are getting cut off because you're giving away what God gave you to take care of yourself, that's your fault. And when the person to your right and the person to your left is doing better and you want to do better, you're going to have to learn how to open your mouth and ask people for your worth. Mm. I, I'm see. I'm loving this. You, you, you are. Um, my goodness, I, I am so excited just to be on this call with you, um, because I'm loving the fact that you know, with my last question, you can recall when you started because it's something that's so genuine to you. It's just natural. You know what I mean? And I'm loving that that you've been changing lives for <clears throat> forever, forever. And that alone is so commendable because some people don't even want to, you know, put themselves out there and say, look, this, I do have a story behind this. I have a story. You have a story. And you unapologetically share your story. And now you have turned this into a, so, so big on social media um, that people are now coming to you like, dang, how can I do it as well? And you pour it into them and letting them know the reality of the situation. Not just a facade. No, it's none of that. It's the reality of the situation. And it is a generational thing. You have to be able to build that legacy, not just for you, but later on down the line. And that is something that we are not taught. And I'm loving this. I am so loving this. Um, One of my things is what one of the um, projects, from, from my understanding, that you had just finished a conference, what was that about? So we did a, a conference in Vegas uh, called Don't Gamble With Your Money. We actually have one coming up uh, in Florida, November 16th through the 20th as well. But Vegas was about, and, and even the one in Florida, another thing that we don't do is we don't stop. We don't sit still long enough to, number one, gather information, and to, number two, plan our next steps. Especially as women, we run from fire to fire like firemen. We run from emergency to emergency like we first responders. Mm -hmm. And we never sit and take the time to, number one, connect with each other on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. A lot of women know a lot of women, but they don't know a lot about a lot of women. I know a lot about a lot of women. I know who's the expert at this, and I know who the expert at that is. And so when people come to me and say, this is the help I need, I keep a referral on my mouth. So that's number one. Until we learn to operate in a non-messy zone as women Mm -hmm. and make this business, and if she's not doing good business, then call her out on it and, and, and ostracize her. But don't penalize all women for the shady behavior of a few. It's a few rapscallions out there. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie and say all oh, my sisters is above board because they not. And, but 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 you have to at some point feel sorry for them because what makes you hate yourself enough that you undermine another woman? You gotta hate yourself. But here again, just because I feel sorry for you, don't mean I got to do business with you. Move around, boo boo. Bye bye, Felicia. Go to the corner. And I'm going to keep over here partnering with these women who do understand global success, that do understand we can all get some, we can all get a piece. We ain't got to sit and measure, oh, her piece bigger. My piece bigger because I've been working on my piece longer. Hello? But it doesn't mean that you can't get a piece. Get you a piece and go strong and stop trying to count what everybody else has. Mm-hmm. Because I promise you, with the consistency, with the manpower hours, and with the investments that I made in my business, anybody else could be exactly where I am, if not further mm-hmm. along. So I don't take it for granted, but at the same time, I know 
the level of work and the the level of coaching and and me hiring experts and me hiring professionals that went into where I sit right now. On social media, you don't advance for free. Tickets to the next level on social media cost you. They cost you time. They cost you energy. They cost you effort, and they cost you money. They cost you consistency. So when y'all watch the Empire on Wednesdays, I'm building mine. You At some point, you either got to pay the cost to advance or you're going to pay the cost to stay where you are. So to be honest, I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> but I hope, that, I hope that was in the ballpark of, of answering it. <laughs> Oh, it was more than on the ballpark, yes, 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 I just want to, I just want to piggyback on what you said, you know, you were speaking about, you know, call them out if they're not, you know, above board, but don't penalize the whole, you know, the whole circle, and that's so true, because, you know, one person gets burnt, they sit up there, and they burn the whole tree. You know, and that's not the case just because of one leaf. And so what do you tell your audience about collaboration and how they need to go about it and not having to do everything alone? What are your thoughts on that? Right now we're running a project. I have five major projects that my brand is launching between now and uh, March of next year. And I have about 75 women in my mentorship program, the 75 women have split up in groups of 25, literally. And they're partnering with me to get these projects off the ground. So, number one, they learn. And number two, it's going to be a money-making initiative for every single one of them because I do believe in, 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 in gapping the money down. I do believe in breaking bread. I do. If the money comes through the door, I'm the little red hen. If you help me bake the loaf, you get a stomach. And And I just know that that old uh, proverb, if you want to go fast, go by yourself, but if you want to go far, go go with a team, go with other people. It's true. And it's something that is keeping the wage gap where it is. It's something that's keeping women in business where they are because we just flat out are not collaborating. And learn. So a couple of things I want to Lightly. I recently uh, was about to do business with somebody, had to change it up at the last minute because once I introduced that person to my circle, my circle spoke, spoke up and said they don't they, they, they don't operate, you know, above board all the time. And so you have to realize that that circle, the power of that circle, keeps you from making decisions, you know. So it's other people, it's it, it because I'm not expert everything, so I got that's my brand. I got you know the office manager. I'm just great on the surface. All but me making me feel good, and so the the quicker you realize that and, and stop being or and number two, create you some strategic partnerships and where everybody has aspirations to move to the next level, just the diversity in the thought process, just the different people experiences, it's going to take you way further than you would be able to go by yourself. Reciprocity rules today on social media. It really does. Damn, I, I'm... Uh... Girl, I'm going to have to follow you on social media. <laughs> you can um, call me after the show, boo. You can call me. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm loving what you're saying because, you know, a lot of things that um, you experience, I experience. And I am a, a mom, too. I'm a single mom of, of two. I, I was laid off 2011, have been blessed not to punch nobody's clock since. So I'm loving Amen. exactly what you're saying. And so when you continue to, to do God's work and continue to transform these lives and continue to be able to pull on into them and to be able to make a difference and put your sample in it, and, and I'm loving it. So please take a moment, 
let the people know how they can be able to connect with you because I know there's going to be some people that's going to connect with you, want to know more about you, and we want to make sure that they don't miss a beat. So let them know where they can be able to find Miss Danielle. That you can find me all over social media at Wealth Speaker, W E A L T H S P E A K E R. You can Google the name Winningham, and and you go get a thousand articles and everything else uh, with my name all over. It should not be hard to find me because we are that heavy in the use of social media. I have a great new program coming up, uh, and and for the next probably ten to twelve months, all I'm going to be teaching is women who uh, either need to free themselves from corporate America, how to get free, and entrepreneurs who need to free themselves from being a brokepreneur, how to get free. So freedom is a two-pronged program that is, is strictly about being free from jobs and being free financially. Uh, but you can catch me every day, every day. I think I've missed a total of three days on Periscope in the last uh, 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 six months Every day on Periscope At Wealth Speaker And every day on Facebook Live Under my name Danielle Winningham Every day Even if you don't have money To invest in a coaching course right now I'm a firm believer of giving value first If you come and listen to me Every day You're going to improve your life And soon you will Be able to invest in your business If you come Take notes Listen, and one of my favorite words ever, execute. Do something. Oh, yes, do something. And, you know, you you hit a very important uh, point about being consistent. You have not missed. Yeah, I see you every day. You're on my Facebook Live and you're on my Periscope. And I love that because, you know, if they're not on Periscope, they can't say they can't find you on Facebook Live. And you do give value. I say to my audience all the time, I said, you know, we you give us the time and data in return for our value and our information, and you definitely give that. So I want to make sure that I say that to you. And I just want to thank you so much for being on uh, the podcast tonight. We are so, so thankful to have you. And uh, Vanessa, do you have any uh, closing words? This woman is absolutely amazing. If you guys heard anything that she took said, take key and follow her, connect with her. Yes. Well, like I said, thank you so much, Danielle. It was a honor and a pleasure to speak to you, and I know that the audience is going to be knocking down your social media door. Oh, thank you, Dr. Spencer. Thank you for inviting me on. I appreciate you. Well, thank you so much. And I want to thank everyone for listening today. I know you got some powerful, powerful nuggets. And so until next time, we'll continue to bring you people who are changing the world via social media. Good night, everyone. Good night.